it's not the loneliness itself. It, it's the relationship that you have with your loneliness. Welcome back to my podcast slash video series again, Friend Crush with Amber Akilla. Cute, chaotic, and critical thinking. This is the third time I've tried to record this video. I even updated my laptop software in the process. But this is like an in-between season video response to a question I received, which is similar to some other questions I've received. And I don't do like personal advice unless you follow through with the direct me link for like written advice um because I get too many questions and my therapist said that it's like bad for me to feel like I have to respond to everything um but like if you send me topic suggestions or questions to my instagram at amberakilla at friend.crush um or leave something in the comments I'll like try to mull it over and come up with a response or topic or if I feel like it's relevant or I feel inspired I will respond so I really appreciate feedback and people writing in and yeah today's topic is about making friends feeling lonely not having friends friends as an adult I've spoken about this in previous episodes as well but you know my like thoughts and feelings change regularly adjust regularly I'm going to try to answer this as quickly as I can because I have to go to pole dance soon but um yeah so let's read the question that I received the submission this is from name quarter life crisis subject lonely message Dear Amber, I'm a 30-year-old single girly living in LA. I've always considered myself a social person with a solid group of friends from different groups, some from high school, some from previous jobs. However, I don't have a core group of friends, i.e. the kind of friends you see i.e. the kind of friends you see in Sex in the City who meet weekly for dinner and take trips together. Friendships or lack of have been something that has made me feel insecure in my adult life. My therapist made me do this exercise called circle of intimacy and it feels shaky at the moment. For example, my best friend has a core group of friends she made through this career fellowship. All three of them went to New Orleans for New Year's. I spent the night alone feeling lonely, looking at Instagram, at various groups, hanging out on New Year's Eve, um, hanging out on New Year's Eve's trips they took. My best friend is also going to Japan with her sister and another friend and immediately I felt a sense of dread when she told me because that's one of my dream places to go and I worry I'll be stuck going alone because I don't have a partner or friend who wants to go at the moment. I realize I sound so insecure and I'm working on it but I'd love to hear your views on friendship, dealing with loneliness and feeling like garbage when I see big groups of friends on Instagram and also the real shame that comes with telling someone you spent New Year's slash the holidays alone while they were doing something amazing or the shame of just admitting you're lonely. How do you deal with feeling disconnected from those around you if you ever feel this way or feeling left out? Love you, Angel. This podcast makes me a better person. Illy! Okay, so... I relate to so much of the sentiment of this message in like different ways at different stages of my life and I feel like the way that I feel about friendship now is very different, excuse me, to the way that I felt even just like a few years ago and firstly know that you're not alone in general and also in LA because (laughs) generally speaking Humans are social animals. We require connection to survive. Society is built on connections. Despite the fact that we live in this highly individualistic culture, especially in the West, even though I live in China, but like I was grew up in the West and obviously influenced a lot by like Australian, American, British um, culture and ideology. So a lot of this like Western mindset is like, you're the lone wolf. You don't need anyone. You can make it on your own. Being a woman, sometimes you develop this like hyper individualist trauma response to patriarchal society. You think you have to do everything yourself, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you can feel shame around your loneliness because you think, well, why do I even need anyone anyway? But you're a person, you need connection. You need to socialize. Sorry about the siren um but yeah you're totally valid in how you feel and it's part of the process and it's not the loneliness itself it's the relationship that you have with your loneliness so 
the longest relationship you'll ever have in this life is the one you have with yourself. And I think as you reach your like mid to late 20s, early 30s, there is an opportunity for you to develop a deeper knowledge and acceptance of yourself and to recognize this part of the human experience and your journey. Because recognizing that you need to be your own best friend doesn't mean that you don't have any other friends. It doesn't mean you don't need friends. It just means that you need to remind yourself to take time to connect to yourself, to sort out your like mental palace, clean out the weeds of your life garden, your mental garden, um, so that when you engage in your outside world relationships, your friendships and relationships and connections, you have better discernment and you can also connect more authentically with those people and recognize when you're not connecting with certain people anymore and maybe you need to like reshuffle your friend circle. So it's okay. You're not alone in general. It's part of the human experience. Loneliness also indicates that there is space in your life for new connections. Okay, Rather than thinking about how you have no connections because of your loneliness, think about how this loneliness indicates that room has been made for potential connections, for new relationships. When you have periods of like over-socialization where you're constantly surrounded by people, where you're socializing all the time, You can only socialize with like the same people, right? You don't have space for new connections. You're nurturing and enjoying the relationships that you have. And both of those experiences are valid. And both of those experiences will come into your life at different stages in different ways, because that is the nature of the human experience. And being able to hold space for the contrast of life, I think is how you're able to fully enjoy and embrace it. If you can embrace this period of loneliness um, and learn to become aware of this space and how you want to fill that space when those spaces are filled you'll be able to enjoy that even more than if you're just like trying to distract yourself from it or just trying to fill it with anything and everything and anyone you know so that's the first thing second thing is that you live in LA I haven't been back to the states since the pandemic but I have been to LA a few times I know people from LA, I have friends that live in LA, I have friends that have moved to LA, and it's always the same thing. It's hard to make friends there because geographically, it's very spread out. Um, The culture of the city is like a lot of people go there chasing dreams and looking to like advance themselves, especially in like a career way and like sort of clout superficial way. Um, So... I think that all relationships are transactional in the sense that there is an exchange of intention or lack of intention or energy, etc. But LA specifically is heavily skews towards the like superficial material, transactional nature of relationships. A lot of people will only want to know what you can do to benefit them in terms of like their image and in terms of their career. And if they don't see any immediate benefit from being associated with you, they'll drop you, you're nothing, you're insignificant. Um, I'm not saying that that doesn't exist in other cities, especially major cities, but I think LA has that kind of reputation. But a lot of people that I know that have moved to LA and said that about the city to begin with, have later managed to find their people. You know, the the city just makes you work a little bit harder for those connections, but you will find who you are looking for. You will find your people, believe that you will. Um, So yeah, okay, next thing, close friend groups. As I've gotten older, I value a lot of my close friendships very much, but I also believe that it is important that you have healthy distance in these friendships. You cannot really function as an adult and have like these kind of codependent friend group. And I think sort of like advance in healthy ways, because when you become too attached to people and that attachment becomes part of your identity, which you then become attached to, you're kind of like not really able to make authentic and independent decisions all the time. I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm just saying that it can be hard. And sometimes like you get too close to people and then that can build resentment in your friendships. And then if you're too attached to the idea of the friendship and being associated with this person or the ways in which people associate you together, 
it makes it even harder to step away when things become toxic. That's not all the time. I'm just saying that that can happen. So I have been in friend groups that are similar to this like sex in the city sort of vibe um, and you see each other every week and it's blah, blah, blah. But I feel like that's not really what I, that's not the phase of life that I'm in anymore. And what I really value in my friendships is like mutual honesty, trust, authenticity, loyalty, and integrity. Those things are more important than the frequency with which we see each other. So different dynamics for different phases of your life, but don't feel like you need to strive to curate this like four person gang that you kind of like rely on. Um, and that's not to invalidate anyone that's in that kind of friendship group at the moment, but there are other ways to build friendships. And I think where I'm at now is valuing relationships where I feel like it's not based on just the things that we do together or the things that we have in common. It's about mutual respect for each other and each other's individual path and also being able to cheer each other on and support each other in that rather than like, I'm going here, so you have to come with me, you're going there, so I have to go with you. You know what I mean? Like it's just different and you don't really know how it's different until you've experienced it. Okay, then I think that being able to be alone and comfortable in your aloneness is really important for self-development. People will develop this skill at different stages of of their life or they never do. And I think a lot of society... Uh, the way that society functions facilitates like a running away from self, constantly distracting yourself from discomfort or like traumas or uh, insecurities and thinking that you can like consume your way or distract your way from these things. But the psyche must be hurt. And whether you like it or not, it will catch up to you. And maybe this is just a phase in your life where you're being given this opportunity to reassess how you self-identify, how you want to identify, who you want to associate with, and like the relationship that you have with yourself moving forward. That's how I see those these sorts of periods. Because people that have been following me for a while will remember <laughs> during the pandemic when I went back to my hometown that I left when I graduated university. So my adult friendships, identity, career were all formed in Shanghai. I was back in Perth against my will couldn't go back to Shanghai, couldn't be a part of the friend group that I was a part of, couldn't work on the things that I worked on, couldn't live in the city that my identity was kind of built around. And then I had to sort of figure out, okay, who am I without these things? Who could I be if I didn't have those things? And at the time, it was like depressing as fuck and really difficult. But looking back, because I eventually woke up one day and was like, okay, well, look, I can't be miserable forever. I don't want to be I don't want my identity to be me thinking about how sad I am. I can't go back to Shanghai. And I don't want everyone to think about me in that way either. You know, it's a part of my reality, but it can't be the only thing. So it's up to me essentially to figure out what I'm going to do with the time now that I'm here. And as a result, I was able to confront a lot of unresolved traumas that were related to my hometown. I was able to confront and like re shuffle my brain basically and like change the way that I saw certain insecurities or better understand certain insecurities that I had, which is an ongoing life journey. It's not like it's a destination. Um, And then also just sort of like rework the soil and the foundation of my mind garden, my mind palace. I was under renovation and I was only able to do that because of the space that I had from not being able to socialize in the same capacity, not being able to work in the same capacity. If I was at full throttle, um, working and socializing all the time, I just wouldn't have had the space to do that work. So now looking back, I'm grateful for that time because it set me up to handle moving back to Shanghai and the overstimulation that came with that and the amount of bullshit, but also the amount of rewarding, joyous, um, expansive relationships, opportunities, experiences that I've had since then. So with this space and time, I think that one of the first things that you can do is to re-alchemize your energy in a new way. So 
You're at where you're at. Your feelings indicate to you that there is a need for change. Basically, you don't, this discomfort is valid, but what are you going to do in response to it? Whatever you're doing now, like you are a, uh, you're a product of your habits. Okay. So it's important to either break habits or build new habits. So for me, when I was in Perth and I was sad and lonely and depressed, I thought about things that I'd always wanted to do that I previously didn't really have the time or didn't have the ability to make time or the desire to make time for. And one of those things was pole dance. So I had been interested in pole dance at the end of 2019. I looked into it in Shanghai, hadn't really committed to it. Suddenly, middle of 2020, I have nothing else to do. I'm lucky that in spite of the fact that clubs and stuff are closed, I'm able to still sign up for like group fitness class. So I did pole dance changed my life, changed my body, changed my everything, um, which is a separate discussion, I think. Very radical for women to be connecting with their bodies and dancing with music. I think for people in general, this is like an innate part of the human experience and how we connect with ourselves and our spirit and each other. But dance, pole dance. Okay, so my point is that it's not that you will do these things and you will make a new friend at this new activity. It's that by doing something new that you are interested in that allows you to connect with yourself and your body and just rewire your brain, expand the way that your brain fires, make new neural connections or whatever. Obviously, I'm not a mental health or like a neurologist specialist, whatever. It's just my thoughts and feelings. Um, You are changing your vibes, (laughs) okay? Everything is about vibes. The way that you present is different, so the experiences and the connections that you will be exposed to will be different. Maybe you will make a friend at this new thing that you do, but don't think that life is like one plus one equals two. Life is usually one plus one equals three. In this modern society that we live in that's like data-driven, numbers-driven, results-driven, outcome-driven, men and their desire to like compartmentalize everything and create a formula for everything. Um, It's easy to think that you do this thing and then you get this result. But I feel like giving yourself space for the unknown is really important, especially when it comes to human connection and how you form connections. Because the friends that I have now, I could not have told you like, okay, I'm going to do this thing and meet this person and and I'm going to keep being friends with them for the next five years. I couldn't have told you that. I couldn't have predicted that. But I try to live my life authentically, do things that are true to me while, so like taking control of the things I can control and then maintaining an openness to things that I can't control, can't predict for. And then the things that I can control, the work that I do with that determines how I respond to the things that I can't control and what I do and don't authentically connect with. So I couldn't have told you five years ago when I started my first ever full-time job in Shanghai that I would still be friends with people that I met through that job, okay? And I couldn't have told you that through DJing or whatever, I would have like met this person at this event in this city and then not spoken to them for like five years and then become friends with them five years later. Or like being friends with this one person, meeting the guy that they were dating at the time and then suddenly not really being friends with that girl anymore but then seeing that guy with some other friend and then being friends like you know like you can't predict for these things and that's the scary and exciting part of being alive of being a person and I think that being open to that is what allows you to recognize where your like comfort zone begins and then decide what sort of discomfort you are willing to endure what you want to lean into so that you can have a new experience, have a new connection that is authentic to you. You know what I mean? So for you, maybe in this scenario, you're interested in going to Japan. Maybe you learn Japanese. That's like a new thing that you do. Maybe you sign up for a Japanese class or you go and do a lingo. It's just that changing your habits is going to change you and the vibes at which you are... (laughs) vibrating and existing at and if it is something that you're genuinely interested in that means that you're connecting with your true self and your true interests and opening yourself up in a way that you can't do when you are in a place of shame or when you're feeling insecure and you work through insecurities by working on yourself doing the work you know so recognizing when you feel anxious and 
spiritual self-care is really important. So I talk about thought dumping and then like positive affirmation journaling. So on the one hand, you need to dump all your thoughts, all your insecurities. The more unhinged, the better. Anytime you hesitate writing something down, you should write it down. It means you need to get it out. And you don't have to reread anything that you've written ever, just like engage in the practice. And then on the other hand, writing like a positive self-affirmation script. There's like other YouTube videos about this. Um, and you can kind of like do a little bit of research and see what resonates with you. But one part of my like positive affirmation script, which I do adjust according to different like periods of my life or what I'm looking to plant in my subconscious is that I attract and maintain healthy connections and relationships. When I first started doing this, I thought this meant that whatever was already in my life would become healthy. And what I realized over time is that my baseline, my standard is healthy connections and relationships. So I need to trust that when something doesn't feel right, when something becomes unhealthy or maybe toxic or maybe not authentic anymore, that letting go of that is going to be in service of maintaining and attracting healthy relationships. And that has been the case. And it's hard to let go of people that you care about when things aren't really working, but in retrospect, letting go and not overly attaching to those things while still processing the grief or whatever that might come with that has led to healthier relationships, has led to the maintenance of healthy relationships. So because the human experience is also based on storytelling and you are being driven by a subconscious narrative, whether you realize it or not. And when you're in a place of insecurity and shame, that's when like a narrative that is not actually serving your true desire, your authentic self has taken over. So that's why like positive affirmations are important because you're rewriting that story. Dumping is important. And then like you need to get rid of the trash, get rid of the negativity or the narrative that doesn't help you and then take out the trash and then bring in new things that you want to decorate your mental palace, you know, get rid of the decor that's outdated, that's not really serving a purpose, that's making the space small, or feel small or cluttered and then realign the feng shui of the mental palace, okay? That's how you do it with writing. And I recommend pen to paper. Look, I have this shitty little notebook that I use. Um, versus digital. I don't know, there's just something about the out of the hand. So I recommend that. Um, yeah, keeping yourself open to the possibilities of new connections. Recognizing that this stage is an indication that there is space for new things, okay? Not that there is not enough, but there is space for new. These are two different mindsets. You know, it's like glass half full glass versus glass half empty. The glass is half full, babes. There's room for more, not half empty, okay? Um, and yeah, maybe you do go to Japan on your own. I think Japan is a great place to travel right now because there's heaps of tourists there. So you'll be in contact with all different kinds of people. And also like people in Japan are very comfortable being alone as well. So you could just be by yourself and that's okay too. You know, I think it's very suitable for a solo traveler. If you do want to really get out of your comfort zone, just go to Japan, YOLO. Um, and if you are spending too much time watching other people's lives, that means, and you have like, you feel some type of way about it, that's okay. It's natural to like go into those spirals, but it's also an indication that you're not living your life to the fullest because even for me, I'm very much online, but when I'm online, I'm usually like sharing something or posting something. And then I also take intentional time off one day a week, not on social media or like the addictive social media, try not to go on like in the mornings or like right before bed or at least like, okay, I'm online in the afternoon until the evening, blah, blah, blah. So I manage my time online because I want to live in the real world. I want to be present for my life. I like being online and it's fun, but I don't let my online experience like trump or define my in my experience of real life, if that makes sense. They complement each other, 
there's crossover, but I'm not on my phone. Like, I'm not going to let my phone upset me in my real life. You know what I mean? I'm not going to, I need to draw a line where it's like, okay, I'm getting hate comments online, blah, blah, blah. That's annoying. It's not that I won't like talk about it and vent about it to my friends, but I'm not going to let that make me feel shit about going to pole dance class. You know what I mean? Or like going to the club or going to dinner with my friends. So that's also something to consider. Unfollow people that make you feel insecure, period. Mute them at least if it's like, you know. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts. I'm sorry, this is a little bit rushed because I'm late for my pole dance class. But um, yeah, like do something that you're interested in. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to make a new friend at that activity, but you might. And even if you do, don't feel like you have to be besties because like I've met a lot of people through doing pole dance and stuff and it's not like I've become best friends with them, but it's been great to connect with a new person. And again, that's expanding me out of my comfort zone or social circle or whatever, even just a little bit. And then when I'm in some other scenario, the result of participating in the activity makes me more connected to myself so that when I'm in other scenarios, I might meet or come across people that I can connect with in new ways and then become closer with them. You know, like it's, it's not one plus one equals two, it's one plus one equals three. So those are my thoughts. Thank you for tuning in. Like, follow, subscribe, stay hot and having fun. Um, drink lots of water. Tell your friends and family that you love them. Stay tuned for random episodes the next season. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, at Amber Killer. <laughs> SoundCloud, at friend.crush on Instagram. Please share your thoughts and feelings in the comment section. Love you lots. Speak to you soon. Go be a better person.